Hello everyone. Uh, today I decided to take us through the bishop's call because this is really important and I also have a, an exam question for you at the end uh, for you to try out um, working through uh, the bishop's call. Yeah, the bishop's score is, is very important uh, because it helps us predict uh, success for induction of labor. And induction of labor is a very common procedure. Uh, we know that one out of every five uh, deliveries are a result of um, induction of labor. So that's why the bishop's score is really important to master uh, both for practice and both for and, and exams as well. So we go straight into uh, basic terminology. So we know effacement is the degree of shortening of the cervix. Dilatation is really the internal diameter of the cervical opening, and this is usually done in centimeters. We know induction of labor is the artificial initiation of labor using mechanical or surgical means. And the position of the cervix as it relates to uh, to and the bishop's score is the way the cervix is aligned with the birth canal. Yeah, and then station is the relationship of the most dependent part of the presenting part uh, to the ischiospines. So that's the basic terminology that we should all know um, before we really talk about the bishop's score. Yeah, so what is the bishop's score? The bishop's score is that uh, score that is used to determine the probability of a successful induction. Um, it has not always been like that. Um, Bishop's score was originally described by Edward Bishop uh, in 1964, and it was originally um, uh, described to um, tell the probability of uh, spontaneous labor uh, in multiparous patients. So if the Bishop's score, as it was originally designed, was high, somebody would predict that labor would start in the next one week. Uh, if it was low, uh, labor would start maybe in the next uh, three uh, weeks or so. So that's how it was used, but it's been modified um, over the years. The original bishops also put in consideration the gestation age, the parity of the patient, the presentation, um, whether there's consent or not, and also it put in consideration uh, the well-known uh, cervical parameters, which are dilatation, effacement, um, consistency of the cervix, uh, station of the presenting part, and the position of the cervix. So those are the parameters that are included as part of the whole assessment um, of the bishop's score. Of course, there are debates on if the bishop's score really predicts uh, success of uh, induction of labor, but... Um, I think it's the most used uh, method of predicting success of induction of labor, and it's the most widely used. So we have to learn about it. Um, so what do we use the bishop score for? So there are several uses that you can use the bishop score for. So the first one is that um, you can use it to determine the probability of a successful induction, as we've already said. The second one is that... Um, in clinical practice, we use it um, to determine the method of induction. So if the bishop's score is good, we normally would start uh, the induction with um, oxytocin from the start. If the bishop's score is poor, we normally start by ripening uh, the cervix. So we can use uh, misoprostol, dinopristone. We can use um, balloon catheter to try and... Um, uh, cause cervical uh, ripening. So that's one use of the bishop code. The other one is um, sometimes you are doubting if the diagnosis of labor is there. So if you just do a proper bishop score, you might be able to get to that uh, diagnosis. So because you see effacement, dilatation, all these parameters are part of the labor um, uh, diagnosis. So it might help you decide is the patient in labor or not. Then lastly, when we are inducing labor, uh, we are putting misoprostol, we are putting oxytocin, we like to see an improvement in the bishop's score. So if it's improving, then we are saying there's some progress in our induction um, uh, process. If it's not improving, then we say that maybe the um, induction is failing. So those are some of the uses of um, bishop's score. 
So what are the parameters of the bishop's score? So we have um, these parameters, dilatation, effacement, station, uh, cervical consistency, and position of the cervix. And we have the scores, which run from 0 uh, to 3. Um, you see that this bishop's score um, is kind of um, easy. So you start from 0, 1, 2, 3. If it's closed, it's 0. Of course, if it's 1 to 2, so the numbers are just following each other. 1 to 0, then 1 to 2, when 3 to 4, then above 4 at the end. So then there's effacement. Effacement is quite tricky. Um, but um, you just have to remember 0 to 30, 30 to 40, uh, 60 to 70, and above 80. Then station, you start from minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and then you are on the pluses when you get to three. Then cervical consistency is um, firm. Cervix means that um, cervix feels like your forehead when you touch your forehead with your finger. Medium uh, means that it feels like the tip of your nose, the cervix, and soft means like it feels like uh, your lips. So that's how you determine consistency of the cervix. Then position, if it's up, that's anterior, it's good. If it's in the middle, it's okay. -ish. If it's a posterior it's bad so that's why posterior gets a score of zero because you don't want a, a cervix that is not pointing in front the cervix needs to point in front you easily feel it when you're doing a cervical exam but if it's pointing at the back it's, you, it's difficult to find it it's not aligned with the um, a delivery uh, canal then it's a poor um, a score that you get so it's a zero then if you add up all these scores and you come up with a score of seven, then the bishop score is favorable. And really favorable means that the likelihood of a vaginal delivery is as good as if spontaneous labor had started. So that's the interpretation of favorable. When you say the, um, the bishop score is favorable, what you mean is uh, if it was a uh, spontaneous onset labor, it would have a similar success to induction of labor. So then there's uh, what is called a modified bishop score. So um, what is the modification? The modification is that um, on the place where you have uh, effacement in percentages, um, you put cervical length. So you say a cervix greater than four centimeters is zero. Then between three and four is one. Between one and two is two. And between and the, if the cervical length is zero, there's no cervix. The cervix is completely first. You give a high score of uh, three. So you see the catch here is that um, dilatation and cervical length are exactly the same. If you use cervical length as a parameter for, uh, for effacement. So you see that the cervical length parameters are exactly the same. They are starting from zero, then one to two, then three to four then greater than 4. Even the dilatation is starting from 0, which is closed, then 1 to 2, then 3 to 4, then above 4. So you only have to remember 1. Then uh, station, again, is minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, then you go to the pluses. So this is a modified bishop score. The first modification is that you have uh, cervical length in centimeters now instead of um, in percentages, and this is known to improve... Um, uh, comparability. So if somebody does it and another person does it, the results are comparable if you use centimeters on cervical length other than using percentage of effacement. So that's about um, uh, the modification. The other modification is that you add one for every uh, baby that the patient has delivered uh, before, then um, you add one for if the patient has preeclampsia, then you deduct one. If the patient is nulliparous, you deduct one. If the patient is post-death, and you deduct one if you have preterm premature of membranes. The reason you are deducting is that if somebody is post-death, their labor hasn't started, so it's you're unlikely to induce that labor. Preterm preterm babies are harder to to induce because maybe the uterus is not ready to start expelling the baby, and nulliparous patients. Uh, labors are more difficult to induce than uh, than multiparous labor. So that's why you add one to account for that to the bishop score. If you have a bishop score above nine, then um, it's very likely that labor will start spontaneously. If you have a bishop score below five,
that bishop score is poor and will probably need um, uh, some cervical ripening with prostaglandins or using a catheter. If you have a bishop score of three, then uh, you are likely to fail uh, with this induction process. Anything between five and nine, you probably just need to rupture membranes and uh, uh, start oxytocin. So that's how we interpret the modified bishop score. Unfortunately, there's another modified bishop score. So this bishop score removes the um, three score and fits everything into zero, one, and two, meaning that for this bishop score, unlike the one we've looked at, uh, the maximum, uh, the, the like the regular bishop score, the maximum is uh, the maximum score you get is thirteen. Uh, the modified bishop score, you can get a score above thirteen, and the, um, this. A modified bishop score we are looking at right now the total score is 10 but it's quite simple again because the dilatation and the cervical length have similar uh, parameters all you have to remember is the station the consistency and the position of the cervix are just the same as the other ones for this score a score above six means that uh, the cervix is favorable a score below six means the cervix is unfavorable and we've already said what it means when a cervix is favorable it means that if you induce labor um, your success rate will be very similar to to labor that started spontaneously and then finally you have uh, a simplified bishop score so you only use three parameters and these three parameters are the most most important when you're assessing a bishop score dilatation effacement and station so we need to get these ones right because they're the most important dilatation being the most most important followed by effacement followed by station so for this simplified bishop score we just delete cervical consistency and we delete our uh, position of the cervix we just use three parameters and as we can see the uh, total bishop score for this one is really just nine and uh, of course five is considered favorable and less than five is unfavorable so uh, the importance of seeing all of these is that um, you might be in a situation where other people use another bishop score and you can really um, remember uh, what each of the bishop score um, that uh, we've described so uh, for those who find it difficult to remember the parameters of the bishop score, I usually use um, desk position. So that means uh, D for dilatation, E for effacement, S for station, uh, C for consistency, and position for position of the cervix. The beauty of this mnemonic is that um, the sequence in which these um, parameters are is the sequence of their importance so dilatation is the most important parameter in the bishop score followed by effacement followed by station followed by consistency of the cervix and so on and then the other one that i've found in circulation that is common is the copids um they like to use this one because um if you're inducing labor labor is is um associated with a lot of um uh, induction of labor is associated with a lot of uh, complications sometimes so you need to call the pediatrician so copies is a good mnemonic for a bishop score when you're trying to induce labor so thank you so much for listening and we will see you in the next uh, video